Okay, so if we want to uh, think about what's happening in an internal flow, uh, we can do a differential analysis uh, where we see as we move down the flow, uh, and here we're talking about fully developed flow, uh, how is the overall thermal energy of our, um, of our flow going to change? And so we'll do a little uh, uh, energy balance uh, for internal flow here. All right, so we want to find an expression that tells us how the, main, the, the mean fluid temperature changes as we move in the, in the x direction uh, when there's some kind of heat transfer at the surface. Okay, so we're going to use a first law analysis here to do that. And so we're going to start with a little differential uh, volume in our internal flow, uh, where dx is a, a, a small change uh, in the x direction, uh, and p is our perimeter, and so our, um, our volume here has a volume of dx times our cross-sectional area. At steady state, uh, we can say that in this volume, uh, the thermal energy is not changing, right? The thermal energy of the fluid itself is changing as it moves from left to right, but if we just watch this flow move through here, the thermal energy in our volume at any one moment is going to be the same. And so we start with uh, a zero as our change in energy, and then we can calculate our energy in. Our energy in is the mass energy that flows in the left side plus whatever comes in the surface. Uh, and then our energy out is whatever flows out the right side. Now I can take these two uh, m dot terms and subtract them. And since m dot is the same on the left as in on the right, in other words, this, I've got the same mass flowing in as I have flowing out, uh, I can turn that into a, a delta t term here. And this equation down here essentially says the change in energy of my fluid as it moves from one surface to the next surface uh, is whatever uh, comes in through the sides of my pipe, through, through my internal flow. Now, uh, what that leaves us with is, so we can set our, that delta T value to a, to a differential dt dx uh, times dx. So what does that mean? Well, the, this is the slope of my temperature change, right? And I'm moving this far in the x direction. So that's my overall change. Uh, and then uh, recognizing that the P is the perimeter of our pipe uh, and making the control volume really small. In other words, turning this uh, into a calculus problem. <laughs> you can see I'm trying to look around my camera here to, uh, to see my equation. Uh, we can rewrite our equation uh, this way. Um, and so this is P dx um, is uh, the surface area, right? So we have a flux here times the surface area of our volume. Uh, in other words, that darker red area uh, is equal to uh, this term over here. And now we see that we have a dx on both sides and we're going to be able to get rid of that, uh, that dx. And when we get rid of that dx, we have this equation up here. And this is generally true. We haven't made an assumption here about what kind of flux uh, a constant temperature or an unconstant temperature uh, uh, is coming in from the side. We've just said that it's some kind of surface flux. Um, so we've got a nice general um, equation here. Uh, and we can solve this if we assign two particular kinds of uh, boundary conditions, a constant flux condition uh, or a constant surface condition. Um, if we use a constant flux condition, uh, we end up with this equation right here. Uh, and if we use, and you can see here that I've just, all I've done is change, replace this with Q double prime constant flux, moved it to the other side. Um, And if we have a uh, constant surface, uh, then I can find a, um, a convection term here, uh, which is going to replace my Q double prime, uh, and rearrange my uh, equation to get this. 
Now we can then ask, what kind of solutions are we gonna get here, right? Uh, when we have a constant um, uh, flux here, everything on the right side is constant, okay? So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the temperature with X, uh, the slope of the temperature in the X direction is gonna be constant. So we're gonna have a linear temperature field here. Uh, and we'll sort of work through that in class and solve that. Um, but that one's pretty straightforward. This next one is a little more complicated, right? What kind of equation is that gonna result in? Uh, and that is, we've got constants here. So it tells us the slope is gonna be a constant times this term. TM though changes, right? As we move from the left to the right, TM is gonna get higher. So initially at the entrance of our pipe, when the, we have the biggest difference between these two things, uh, we're gonna have a relatively large flux, or I'm sorry, a relatively large uh, change in temperature in the X direction. As T mean gets closer and closer to T surface, the right hand side here gets smaller um, and the slope of our temperature change field uh, gets smaller. So we're gonna see a kind of field that um, moves up quickly towards the surface temperature and then moves asymptotically uh, towards that surface as the mean temperature gets larger and larger. And that's our little introduction to uh, some of the um, intricacies of, <laughs> of internal flow.